Um, I'll start with a question to you guys. How'd you get here this morning? It's not a trick question. Hold it up. So you drove. Yeah. But, you know, like, it's more to it than that. Like, you you would have had to park in the car park. I mean, to get here in this room, you'd have to, you know, come in. And, you know, did you, uh, uh, you know, like, like, you would have had to come through two doors. Just had to get here, get in this room, take your seat. You know, quite often in the scriptures, people say because it doesn't tell you every time, every single thing you got to do, then then those things don't count. But that's that's nonsense. Like driving here is like, do you believe in Jesus Christ? Yes. You know, you believe in Jesus to be saved. But it's more than that. Yeah. Once you believe in Jesus, Acts two thirty. You know, what 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 should we do? Repent, be baptized, receive the Holy Spirit. There's other steps. It's just not. But you could explain it as just driving here. How'd you get here? There's um. There's something um like the door there. I'll just talk about one door. This door. You came through that door this morning. Did any of you even give it a thought? He just came through. Didn't even give the do poor old door a thought. You did. Yeah. Should it be closed? It is the air conditioner going. <laughs> <laughs> but you walk through there unassisted, without even thinking about it. Did you stand in front of that door this morning going, oh, Lord, help me get through this door. Lord, give me more, give me more door worthiness. You know, you psych yourself up and conjure up this uh, a super spiritual person to just to walk through that door. A bit disappointed. You just all walk through the door without giving it a thought. So I'm going to talk about through faith. And faith, if you like, and compared to that door. A lot of us get it wrong. A lot of us think, oh, I've got to conjure up this faith, I've got to sit, oh, you know, and we're told to, in our walk in the Lord, to exercise our faith and to grow in faith and to, and, 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 and to apply ourselves in those areas. But at the end of the day, faith is as simply as walking through that door. You walk through that door believing by doing so, you would enter this room without even thinking about it. And through faith, we get to access so many benefits in the Lord. So I said the other night, like, the scriptures are amazing. They just don't tell you to do something. They tell you why. They ex explain the benefits of doing so. They're going to look at a lot of benefits of doing things through faith. And uh, we know that Paul gave an explanation of, of what faith is. But at the end of the day, in its simplicity, it's simply trusting God. That's faith. Trusting him. If you trust him, you believe him. You believe what he says. Abraham's called the father of faith. God told him to leave his country. Go to a land he didn't know. He just didn't sit there. Yeah, I believe. And then sit down and watch the footy. He got up and he went. That's faith. I believe God. I'm going, to, I'm going to obey him. I'm going to do it. I'm going to apply it. A lot of stuff I've been uh, studying lately, and one of them is faith. The other one is God is, and all this sort of stuff. And there's a recurring theme that's come up in all of them, and that is to trust God. Trust him. Let's start in Acts chapter 3, verse 16. Acts 3, verse 16. 
And this is talking about the healing of the uh, of the guy who was uh, crippled. And it says, and uh, when he was healed, the people gathered around and were amazed and so forth. And in verse 16, it says, talking about how they took and slew Jesus Christ, the prince of this, uh, you know, this uh, of, of, of peace, of life. And it says, and his name, so in the name of Jesus, through faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom you see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him has given this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. They all knew this guy. He was a regular. He was out the front of the temple always begging for arms. They knew he couldn't walk. They just knew it wasn't a con job. They knew this was a real healing. And it eventuated through faith. I love the word through. Like, like I'm talking about that door. You go through. How do you access something? You go through. Faith is how you go through. Faith is uh, uh, like the channel where we receive all the blessings or the door, whatever way you like to put it. It's how you access this. Go through faith. Not your own efforts, not your own thinking, but in, your, in trusting God. Believing God, putting faith in the all faithful one. He's been faithful. He's proved he's faithful. So through faith here, in Jesus' name. Has brought, if we want to broaden this, it brought perfect soundness, it brought strength, and it brought healing. Faith in the name of Jesus. Through faith in his name can bring these things into your life. There are benefits all the way through the Bible. There are benefits. Like Graham said in his testimony, you know, you know when you are and you know when you're not. The thing is, whether you are or whether you're not, you trust God. Come before him. Romans chapter 3, verse 25. These are all just single verses we're going to go through today. Romans 3, verse 25. Again, speaking of Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation. How? Through faith. In his blood. So in his blood this time. The first time was through, through faith in his name. Now we have a propitiation through faith in his blood. To declare his righteousness for the remission of sins of the past through the forbearance of God. Now propitiation, which is also the word for the Old Testament mercy seat on the ark. <laughs> which is a fascinating subject, Jesus, our mercy seat. But the propitiation is the sacrifice for sin. That's what a propitiation is. Jesus Christ is the, is, is, is the sacrifice for sin. He is the propitiation. That's what it means. And for us, through faith, in his blood. So in through this sacrifice, like in the Old Testament, we're familiar with they sac sacrifice animals and, and, and all this sort of stuff and that uh, under the law. Now we read that there's no more sacrifice other than the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. And through faith in his blood, we receive the remission of sins. And sometimes we don't show enough faith in his blood. Sometimes we go, oh, my sin is just so bad. I'm such I'm such a I'm such an unworthy person, which we are. Join like join the club. You know, I'm, God would never want me, and all this sort of stuff goes through our minds. And what you're basically saying is, your sin is greater 
than the blood of Jesus Christ, which it's not. The blood of Jesus Christ is greater than your sin. It, it's the greatest stain remover ever. The blood of Jesus Christ. Where do you have through faith in his blood? You see the through faith in his blood? His blood cleanses me. His blood cleans me. He has taken care of my faults. He has washed me and cleansed me and made me clean. Have faith in the blood of Jesus Christ as it applies to you. Romans 3 verse 30. Romans 3 verse 30. Seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith and uncircumcision through faith. You know, Jew or Gentile, circumcised, uncircumcised, justified, justified through faith. That's a, <laughs> that's a little word, but it's a big meaning. It has a big word, probably is for me. Justified, made right, made right through faith. Through faith. Trust God. Believe him. Verse 31. Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid, yea, we establish the law or fulfill it. Jesus on the cross, it is finished. Fulfilled the law. Through faith, through faith, we establish the law. We are actually the fulfillment of what was spoken about in the Old Testament. It says the angels, the prophets and the angels inquired and desired to know what this was all about, the glory that would follow the death of Jesus Christ. Glory was the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Fulfilling the law, establishing it. Galatians chapter 3, verse 8. We probably should have bypassed this one. Galatians 3, verse 8. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all the nations of the earth, uh, all the nations be blessed. You know, again, this justification of the heathen through faith. You know, it doesn't matter who you're born to, where you come from. You need to be born of the blood of Jesus Christ. You need to be born again. You need to come into his family. You need to be adopted into his kingdom. And through faith, you'll be justified. He preached before the gospel under Abraham. Isn't that amazing? Down to verse 14 of the same chapter. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Oh, there's a couple of throughs in there. How exciting is that? Through Jesus, the seed, the promised seed, the blessing of Abraham through Jesus that we might receive the promise of the Spirit, how? Through faith. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. Ephesians chapter 2, <laughs> verse 8. <laughs> one deaf bloke trying to talk to another deaf bloke for by grace are you saved how through faith 
I'm going to have to look up the difference by faith and through faith one day. But I'm just looking at the through faith. Yes, for by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is a gift. It is a gift of God. <laughs> there are so, so many mighty statements in the scriptures that sometimes we're just so blasé, we just, whatever blasé means. But, you know, I like big words. Just, we just, sometimes we just don't even think about it, do we? Oh, how does it make you feel to receive a gift from somebody? Pretty good. That was nice of them. But we actually received a gift from God. Oh, 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 God never gives me anything. You kidding? Grace. Salvation. Through faith. Gift. Again, faith, faith is intricately interwoven in everything we do. And I just want to reiterate again, as simply as trusting God. You trust him. You just accept it. You just, you know, you, you you do what he says. You you live life the way he says and things work out the way he says. On this in our human nature, we, we, we go through that. We, we, we make it hard sometimes. Two Timothy chapter three, verse fifteen. And he's Paul speaking to Timothy. He says that from a child thou has known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in. Christ Jesus. Scriptures by themselves are no good. Uh, like I, I told you about those creeds they're found in the Bible, I actually have atheist scholars pouring over the scriptures. You know, skeptics. They know the they know the they know the scriptures. But when it's not combined through faith, which is in Christ Jesus, they're missing the whole lot. So the scriptures are able to make you wise. Kind of the opposite of what you're told today, isn't it, in the world? It's just an old book, but it's not. It's inspired by the Holy Ghost. It's Scriptures are made, able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 6, verse 12. Not a lot of verses, but not too many more to go. That you be not slothful. One of my favorite words in this Bible, slothful. Isn't it a marvelous word? Uh, you know, the scripture about not letting your walls, being lazy and letting your walls fall down and all this sort of stuff. Don't be so lawful. But followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. So we, 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 we follow. And, you know, we're told we're surrounded with a great cloud of witness and you know, a lot have gone before us. And we've got all those who went before us in the scriptures and through, and then through history. Be followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Don't miss that benefit. There are a lot of benefits, isn't it? Inherit the promises. Hebrews 11, verse 13. Yeah. Known as the faith chapter, isn't it? And it says, 
he goes through individuals, but then he says, these all died in faith. Oh, that's how I want to die. I don't want to die like that. In faith. Just not yet. <laughs> not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them. A part of faith, part of faith is also lining ourselves up in agreement with what God says. It's agreeing with it. They're persuaded. Part of faith, again, it's not a blind faith. And quite often here, oh, we just blindly believe there's a God with no evidence and no proof. That's just nonsense. Straight away, we've received the Holy Spirit. We have all the proof we need. We have the evidence from God. But we also have the knowledge from the Scriptures where we can be persuaded just like these guys were. And get this, like, they didn't receive the promises. They can only see them afar off. They were persuaded of them. And what happened? They embraced them. Do we embrace them? Embrace, this, embrace the promises of God? and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Next verse. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. But this isn't our home. This isn't our home. Why do we get tied up in in the arguments of this world, in the arguments of politics or in the arguments of whatever. This is not our home. We're here as representatives, ambassadors of a foreign country, the kingdom of God. And we can say in the kingdom of God, this and this and this happens. Your kingdom go for your life. I'm not going to end well. We're ambassadors. But they didn't inherit the promises. But we, through faith, will inherit the promises. Um, and we're also told that, uh, you know, that through faith, we understand that the world was created by God with unseen things. Yeah. We un we understand that through faith. Hebrews eleven verse thirty three. Who again he's this term through faith. Get this. Subdued kingdoms. Wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions. Next verse. Quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens through faith. Oh, sometimes we look at this world and think it's too big, too big to overcome. Kingdoms of the world just gone mad. Through faith. We've got plenty of Old Testament stories. Through faith, they subdued kingdoms. <laughs> Nothing's too big for God. Sometimes we look, this is just too big. This is just too overwhelming. They subdued kingdoms. Daniel in the lion's den through faith. He was told to stop praying. He was thrown in the lion's den for praying. 
world's getting very close to that. Keep praying. Daniel kept praying. And the Lord closed the lion's mouth. And the enemies always end up the ones being destroyed. Always. Through faith. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego quenched the violence of fire. Not even the smell of smoke was on them when they came out. <laughs> Through faith. So, and there's so much more. Like, like when, when we think just Moses with Pharaoh, Pharaoh's the world leader. You can't come against Pharaoh. It's like coming across against the United States these days, I guess. You can't, you've got no hope. But he subdued kingdoms. He re, Israel walked out, free people. You know, when we think something's too hard in our life, if God can do that through faith, he can help you out, can't he? He can help you out. Let's finish in 1 Peter. Chapter 1, verse 5. It's talking about us now. Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Again, through faith unto salvation. We are kept by the power of God we are kept by the power of God. We're in his hands. We're in his protection. We still get scared sometimes, don't we? The power, the power of God. When we understand who God is and his immense power, who should we be afraid of? As Jesus said, be afraid of God. Don't be afraid of man. So through faith, we can have perfect soundness, strength, healing. Our sins cleansed through the blood of Jesus Christ. Justification. We establish the law. Receive the promise of the Spirit. Receive a wonderful gift from God, saved by grace. Through faith, the scriptures can make us wise unto salvation. Through faith, we inherit the promises. Through faith, we can subdue kingdoms and whatever else comes in our life. And through faith, we're kept by God until salvation that's going to be revealed very shortly the way things are going when the Lord comes back. Amen.